I'd like to comment about a YouTube video called The Plant-Based Diet by Michael Greger, a TEDx reply. Let's go through it because I think it's rather exciting and interesting. Really poignant for my family, heart disease. Dr. Dean Ornish and colleagues demonstrated decades ago that our leading cause of death could be reversed with diet and lifestyle changes alone, yet hardly anything happened. Even now, hundreds of thousands of Americans continue to needlessly die from what we learned decades ago was a reversible condition. I saw it with my own eyes. My grandmother was cured of her end-stage heart disease by Nathan Pritikin, one of Dean's predecessors, using similar methods. She was given a medical death sentence at age 65, but thanks to a healthy diet, was able to enjoy another 31 years on this planet, until age 96, to continue to enjoy her six grandkids, including me. Dr. Greger talks about his grandmother who was given a death sentence at age 65. And after going to Nathan Pritikin, who I was the director of the Pritikin Better Health Program, outpatient program, I remember uh, they wrote about her in the book by Nathan Pritikin. And as he stated, she lived another 31 years, uh, even though she had been given a death sentence regarding the fact that her heart disease condition was terminal. So she actually lived uh, 97 years of age. And so it's pretty exciting because it also influenced Dr. Greger uh, to become a lifestyle medicine expert as he is. Let's continue. So if effectively the cure to our number one killer could get lost down some rabbit hole and ignored. What else might there be in the medical literature that could help my patients but just didn't have a, a corporate budget driving its promotion? Well, I made it my life's mission to find out. That's why I became a doctor in the first place and why I started a nonprofit site called nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website's free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. Uh, just put it up as a public service as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother. New videos and articles nearly every day, and the latest in evidence-based nutrition. What a concept. OK, so what does the science show is the best way to lose weight? If you want testimonials and before and after pictures, you have come to the wrong place. OK. So I don't know about you, but I struggled with being overweight uh, during most of my younger years. By the age of uh, 22, I became clinically obese and I had suffered a TIA, a transient ischemic attack. And I had high blood pressure for years leading up to that. And I realize now that a lot of it had to do with uh, my American diet that I was following that I thought was so good for me, eating all this protein to try and gain weight to play football. So Dr. Greger is interesting because he uh, found that in the literature, we knew years before how to prevent and reverse cardiovascular disease. Now he's making a statement. We now have the number one best solution for weight loss. And if you want to stay tuned, please do so because there's a really good segment that compares the plant-based protein diet to the keto diet and explains some of the science behind why we now know the best way to lose weight and keep it off for years as I have kept the weight off for 40 years and stayed in great shape. I want you to be appreciative of the fact that I'm going to comment on the areas where it really is needed. Uh, Danny, we have all three cameras going, do we? I'm not interested in anecdotes, I'm interested in evidence. When it comes to making decisions, as life and death important, as to what to feed ourselves and our families, then there's really only one question. What does the best available balance of evidence say right now? Okay, well look, I mean, with enough portion control, anyone can lose weight. If you lock someone in a closet, you can force them to lose as much body fat as you want. Chaining someone to a treadmill could have a similar effect. Yeah, so he makes the point of portion control, which was years of what Weight Watchers taught. 
and uh, Nutrisystem, I think it was, by eating little tiny portions and semi-starving people, they can lose weight. But that type of approach of willpower doesn't work because people have to have the feeling of being satisfied, fill their stomach with enough of the right types of foods, not little portions of the wrong kinds of foods, namely the four food groups. Also, he said just chain someone to a treadmill and do enough exercise, they might be able to lose the weight. But if they have a genetic tendency to being overweight and they were born with more fat cells, many times people who are exercising are frustrated. And I don't know about you, but I was exercising quite a bit and I couldn't lose weight unless I starved myself and kept uh, exercising beyond the normal expected levels. So let's go further and find out what is this novel solution. But what's the best weight loss regimen that doesn't involve calorie restriction or exercise or a felony? Well, I have scoured through the medical literature at all the randomized controlled trials, and the single most successful strategy to date is a diet of whole plant food. The single most effective intervention like that ever published in the peer reviewed science. Okay, so he's referring to what's called the BROAD, B R O A D study. It's a controlled study using whole plant based diet in a community for obesity, ischemic heart disease, or diabetes. And let's see what the findings were of this amazing, incredible study that uh, helped people to lose weight and essentially keep it off over much longer periods of time than any other prior study. Medical literature, a whole food plant-based diet. That works better than anything else studied to date. I mean, uh, we've known for more than 40 years that those who eat predominantly plant-based weigh on average about 30 pounds lighter than the general population, but you don't know if it's the diet itself until you put it to the test. In 2017, Okay, so he referred to the Framingham study by William Costelli, who's the longest tracking of people uh, in a community in the Boston area, Massachusetts. So it's important to recognize that the history of analyzing people who have followed more of those people, they looked in the segments that were on a plant-based diet, and those people not only lost the weight, lowered their cholesterol, and reduced the incidence of death from cardiovascular disease. But now this broad study, uh, let's take a look at what they find. A group of researchers in New Zealand published a broad study, a 12-week randomized control trial in the region with the highest obesity rates, the poorest region in the country. In overweight individuals were randomized to either standard medical care or semi-weekly classes offering advice and encouragement to eat a low-fat diet centered around fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which are beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. And that's all it was, just empowerment with knowledge. No meals were provided. People were merely informed about the benefits of plant-based eating and encouraged to you know, incorporate it into their own lives. No significant change in the control group, but the plant-based intervention group, even without any restrictions on portions, being able to freely eat all the healthy foods they wanted, lost, on average, 19 pounds by the end of the three-month study. Well, you know, look, 19 pounds is a respectable weight loss, but what happened next? I mean, at the end of those 12 weeks, class was dismissed, and no more instruction was given. You know, the researchers were curious, you know, how much weight the subjects had gained back after being released from the study. Okay, so he set the stage for these individuals on an education program for 12 weeks, and they would have uh, weekly meetings, and they would go over the health tips and ideas, and they weren't fed any food. There was no intervention at that level. And it's interesting that these individuals lost on average of 19 pounds. Now he's leading up to the key question is, how many of these people, when they lost the weight, they kept it off because really we're looking at a lifestyle difference and really looking at more, did they lose body fat rather than just water weight or just 
because there was no food in their intestines from say fasting or starving, they emptied what was in their intestines. So it's not false weight, it's true reduction in, in weight, uh, particularly water, uh, fat weight. Some of it would have been water weight loss, but I had a similar experience because I published the book Grow Young and Slim years ago. And in this book, I published my experience working with uh, Nathan Pritikin, who Michael Greger referred to. This book was published in the year 2000. I have the updated ebook now uh, published at our website. And we started off with 12 week classes. We just found that it was a little hard to get people to show up, drive into town in LA uh, for 12 weekly classes, but we reduced it down to six weekly classes. And we then also included a food demonstration to show the people how to prepare the foods based on the current cookbook, Simply Healthy Cookbook. There was a prior one before that when I was working with Nathan Pritikin, and this was oil-free, uh, whole food prepared as unprocessed as possible. Uh, we had uh, whole grain uh, spaghetti. We had beans, legumes, fruits, and vegetables, as he described, with no added, added animal product, although we permitted them to have um, animal products, say three ounces uh, a week, which is what we called our regression diet. Some people uh, in the Pritikin Better Health program used uh, the uh, Pritikin program for diet and exercise that, that is book, used uh, animal product daily, three ounces. But the problem is when people are eating animal flesh daily, they tend to eat uh, three ounces, not that. They eat more than that. So let's uh, keep track of that. And in my growing and slim, the results were rather astonishing. Even when I intervened with Tony Robbins in a 10 day program, all following our cookbook advice, uh, the Simply Healthy Cookbook. And these individuals, the forerunner to that was uh, this book, which is how to look great and feel sexy that uh, all the individuals at the Tony Robbins event uh, purchased this book. This was copyright book in 1992. So I passed it out at the Tony Robbins event in 1994 as well. So let's go a little bit further. Now let's see what the success outcome was. And in my experience, following people 10 years, 20 years, even 30, 40 years later, uh, individuals have sustained and continue to improve as I found I did. Here we go. So at the six month mark, everyone was invited back to get reweighed. Uh, the plant-based group had left the three month study 19 pounds lighter, you know, but you know, by six months, they were only down about 27 pounds. They got even better. The plant-based group was feeling so good physically and mentally had been able to come off so many of their medications that they were sticking with the diet on their own and the weight had continued to come off. So that's pretty exciting. The individuals at the end of the study continued on the program and uh, had an average of 27 pounds of weight lost over the course of that uh, additional period. Now let's see what they have to say about uh, medication use. Uh, in our experience, in the first three months, most everyone was off almost all their blood pressure medications, heart medications, and so forth with the guidance of their medical doctor. But the doctors were astonished at the incredible results of lipid reduction, blood pressure reduction, and blood sugar st stability levels. Here, let's take a look what, what uh, the report found in the broad study. All right, what about a year later? Even in studies that last a whole year, where people are, you know, uh, put on a particular diet, coach the entire year to stick to it, you know, by the end of the year, any initial weight loss in the first few months tends to creep on back. The broad study only lasted three months, yet after it was all over, those who had been randomized to the plant-based group not only lost dozens of pounds, they kept it off. They not only lost more weight at six and 12 months than any other comparable trial, that was months after the study had already ended. Whole food plant-based diet achieved the greatest weight loss ever recorded compared to any other such trial published in the medical literature. You can read the record-breaking study free in full at nature.com slash article slash NUTD 2173 or just Point your phone camera at the screen and pick off the QR code. Any diet. So what he pointed out is that by following the whole food plant-based diet, 
uh, we go a step further and remove the sugars and the processed oils because that gives a person even more natural foods to taste with really tasty recipes that we've utilized where we do suggest say the removal of sugar we use stevia or we use fresh fruit as a flavoring uh, but these recipes it took me 15 years to gather the best recipes from around the world i want you to try it it's the best cookbook on oil-free sugar-free cooking uh, we encourage you to use various spices and flavors and chilies and it is so good this is how i have been able to follow a, a plant-based whole foods diet for 40 years and i have to tell you that i also um carry my food with me every day food preparations and uh you know with these items i've got like this tasty lasagna from the cookbook uh that's used with the beyond uh, beef uh, product and i've got some fresh uh, raspberries and blackberries here and i also have uh, some crock pot uh, chili beans so tasty and good and uh, I want to thank Beverly for helping assemble a few of these things uh, for this show as well. And I have a convection oven uh, Breville, and B-R-E-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, I believe it's spelled. And these are like potato chips and potatoes cooked without having to use oil. And I can add spices to it. So I routinely, ever since um, I first lost the weight when I was uh, attending USC and shortly after started working with Nathan Pritikin, uh, I, I encourage people, and to this day I do this as well, and that is I put the fresh food in uh, one of these frozen uh, or containers that you can travel usually with beer cans. I don't put beer in there, but I have my fresh food and I put a little frozen blue ice in there and I have the food with me throughout the day to eat whenever I get hungry. And I would say this is one of the reasons I've had such high level of compliance for my clients and people I teach because I encourage them to plan ahead and enjoy these whole fresh natural foods. So let's go further. That results in a reduction in calorie intake can result in weight loss. Uh, you know, dropping pounds isn't so much the issue. The problem is keeping them off. And a key difference between plant-based nutrition and more traditional approaches to weight loss is people are encouraged to eat ad libitum, uh, meaning you can eat as much as you want. No calorie counting, no portion control, just eating. Right? The strategy is to improve the quality of the food rather than restricting the quantity of food. Okay, hear what he said. Improve the quality of the foods using recipes like we have at the Simply Healthy Cookbook, like I have food demonstration classes. My son uh, practices what's called Chef Roman. If you tune into our YouTube channel and subscribe to this, you'll get an amazing number of tips and ideas and suggestions because you got to learn from some a coach who's been doing this for 40 years, plant-based whole food nutrition. I was even doing it before uh, Michael Greger because my mentor was Nathan Pritikin who saved his grandmother's life. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you I have that credibility and that experience to help to train and guide tens of thousands of people over the last 40 years. And I'm enthusiastic and excited to share this information with you. But notice the sub note in that um, medical journal, the broad study. They were not asked to increase their exercise. They did it through the whole food eating. That's how powerful this nutritional program is. Now, of course, if you're going to get good results, I encourage you to exercise, continue to exercise or add exercise. But the point was they wanted to stabilize on one, that one factor. What was the difference in the diet? Let's go further. There's some really exciting information about to follow. Please stay with me the next seven minutes. If you put people on a diet packed with fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans, allow them to eat as much as they want, they end up eating about 50% fewer calories than they otherwise would. Wait, how can you keep people satisfied removing a thousand calories out of their daily diet by eating more high bulk, low calorie density foods, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans? Okay, he said you can reduce your caloric intake by 50% just by eating high bulk, high fiber foods that are low in 
caloric density because there's no added oils and sugars is primarily vegetables, fruit, high fiber grains, even cereals. And I know there's a big movement right now against uh, gluten and so forth. Okay, so go with quinoa, go with rice. Th those are fine, but really increase what I tell people when they're wanting to lose weight, start off with a big bowl of vegetable salad with oil-free dressing. Have large servings of fruit and vegetables and vegetable soups. That fills you up because those things have little or no calories. They're so low in calories because food's high in fiber and high in water content. Water by definition has no calorie. Fiber by definition has no calories to it. And what you've done is you've moved away from the fattening foods that almost every American and Western uh, diet includes those uh, harmful foods that are recommended on these keto diets that are just insane energy dense foods, meats, cheese, sugars, fats, You've got to move away. And the only way they can control for that is by having people fast. You don't have to fast. You eat ad lib, meaning you eat when you're hungry. And that might be three or four meals during the course of the day. Sometimes as you get close to your ideal weight, I eat more often because I don't want to lose more weight. I'm at a good body weight now after 40 years of sustaining high intensity exercise and activity. So let's go further because he's talking about this dietary pattern helps to prolong eating time because there's more fiber takes time to chew the food longer it displaces or there's less room for the high density high calorie foods and your satiation level you feel satisfied even though it's a lower caloric diet it's nearly half the amount of calories so the women were taking in 1200 calories the men were taking in about 1400 calories so now you see why i'm such a big advocate of this diet even back to the day when i wrote um, an earlier book I want to show you this earlier book that uh, we, we offered at the Tony, Tony Robbins event. In 1991, I wrote this book, Weight Loss and Energy Now. And to this day, this book has the 10 steps to, to really following uh, a great program for a lifetime, which I've proven myself for 40 years, and the Simply Healthy Cookbook, which is the current book. So let's go a little bit further. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to promote all these things, but I'm just enthusiastic and passionate about what I teach. And fewer calorie-dense foods, the meats, cheeses, sugars, and fats. But it may not just be the calories in side of the equation. Those eating more plant-based appear to effectively be burning more calories in their sleep. The resting metabolic rate of those eating more plant-based maybe 10% higher or more, a boost of metabolism that can translate into burning off hundreds of extra calories a day more without doing a thing. Eating plant-based, you burn more calories just being alive, just before research so findings make it into day-to-day -day clinical practice. To so as you're eating these high fiber, low caloric density foods, your metabolic rate goes up. You burn more calories. The chart he showed, the average person was burning 300 more calories, 1,200 versus 1,500, uh, by just following the metabolic pathway, the body increases energy. Of course, I want you to exercise and fit that in because that also will prolong the rate at which your body burns more calories, particularly if you add in weight training, which I'm a big fan of and enjoy as well. But let's go further here. To take one example that was particularly poignant for my family, heart disease. Dr. Dean Ornish and colleagues demonstrated decades ago that our leading cause of death could be reversed with diet and lifestyle changes alone, yet hardly anything happened. Even now, hundreds of thousands of Americans continue to needlessly die from what we learned decades ago was a reversible condition. I saw it with my own eyes. My grandmother was cured of her end-stage heart disease by Nathan Pritikin, one of Dean's predecessors, using similar methods. She was given a medical death sentence at age 65, but thanks to a health... have had their cellular structure destroyed, their cell walls cracked open, and their calories are free for the taking. But if you eat structurally intact plant foods, good advice that calories a day more without doing a thing. Eating plant-based, you burn more calories just 
being alive, just existing. So no wonder why those who eat more plant-based tend to be slimmer, start packing your diet with real food that grows out of the ground, and the pounds should come off naturally, taking you down towards your ideal weight. Okay, so notice that the vegans were closer to their ideal body weight than the vegetarians, than the fructarians, than the flexitarians, and the non-vegetarians. You can see that tra uh, a graph. Clearly, uh, as you go toward non-vegetarian, you see overweight and obesity. Uh, the flexitarian kind of eats whatever they want randomly, but you know tries to fit in a little bit more healthy food. You know they, they are still overweight, maybe not as high a percentage of obese. And pescatarians eating fish, uh, they're better, but not as good as the vegetarians. But even better than that are the vegans. And I go further and say the oil-free, unprocessed food vegans. That leaves you a little room because I do it for health reasons. That if you do eat out at restaurants, there's times that you're going to eat Thai food. There's going to be a little sugar, a little oils in some of the foods. But I go out of my way to select more of the Asian foods that tend to be more oil-free cooking and healthy and natural. So uh, a good summary there uh, looking at this chart. If there was one piece of advice that kind of best sums up my recommendations for weight loss, it would be wall off your calories. See, animal cells are encased only in easily digestible membranes, which allow the enzymes in our gut to effortlessly liberate the calories within a steak, for example. On the other hand, plant cells have cell walls that are made out of fiber, which acts as an indigestible physical barrier, so many of the calories remain trapped. Processed plant foods, fruit juice, sugar, refined grains, even whole grains, if they've been powdered into flour, have had their cellular structure destroyed, their cell walls cracked open, and their calories are free for the taking. But if you eat structurally intact plant foods, chew all you want, you're still going to end up with calories completely encapsulated by fiber, which then blunts the glycemic impact, delivers sustenance to your friendly flora, activates what's called the ileal break, which dials down your appetite, and frankly, dumps trapped calories out the other end. Okay, so that's really critical what uh, Michael Greger stated, and that is that eating the whole foods like whole coconut, the fiber's intact. Whole walnuts, the fiber's intact. Whole olives, the fiber's intact. So when you're chewing it, you're breaking down some of the cell walls and releasing the calories, but some of it, the calories just go out with the fiber intact out of the digestive tract. So inherently, you're going to be taking in far less calories, whereas he contrasted that with animal food. The cell walls are completely dissolved and absorbed in the gut with the uh, hydrochloric acid and the digestive enzymes and juices without even chewing it. If you, if you swallowed meat and cheese down, you're going to absorb all the calories and the fat you eat is the fat you gain. That's why it's so important to not use these separated oils and fats and meats. Um, certainly if you do eat them in very small quantities, and I mean less than a few ounces of meat in a day, preferably like we did with the Pritikin program, a few ounces say a week but it takes about 10 days to recover from an animal based diet and your digestive gut but let's go further so bottom line trying to make sure as many of your calories as possible your protein your carbs your fat is encased in cell walls in other words from whole intact plant foods that's what nature intended to happen millions of years before we learned how to sharpen spears and mill grains, boil sugar cane, our entire physiology is presumed to have evolved in the context of eating what the rest of our great ape cousins eat, plants. The Paleolithic period, when we started using tools, only goes back about two million years. We and other great apes have been evolving since the Miocene era, more like 20 million years ago. So for the first 90% of our hominoid existence, our bodies evolved on mostly plants. It's no wonder then. So going back over 90% of the human existence, our bodies evolved over a high fiber plant-based diet. 
20 million years ago, there's human feces that were analyzed, that is, that they collected and were able to do carbon studies and prove that most of our ancestors were plant-based, not animal carnivores. Uh, and that's why we have a dental structure, a digestive tract structure completely different than carnivorous dogs and cats and so forth. So let's go. That forward. our bodies may thrive best on the diet we were designed to eat. So maybe we should go back to our roots. <clears throat> All right, I uh, got a few minutes here. What, what about the ketogenic diet? You know, body fat loss. Yeah, so go back to our roots. And are, are there is root vegetables, carrots and beets and so forth and yams. But now he's going to talk about the keto diet. You really need to stay tuned for this last part. It's a short segment, but you really need to hear because there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, spread by the keto uh, advocates. Uh, certainly, they're just promote, promoting a version of an animal-based, high-oil, highly processed diet lacking fiber. Hold on. It actually slows down when you switch to a ketogenic diet because your body starts cannibalizing its own protein. Uh, just looking at the bathroom scale, though, the keto diet would seem like a smashing success, losing less than a pound a week on the regular diet to, boom, three and a half pounds within seven days after switching to keto. But what was happening inside their bodies? To okay, so he's saying on a keto diet, because of all the fat and protein, it takes a lot more water to digest. You're losing a lot of water weight, even three pounds during the same time that a typical weight loss diet, you'd only lose one pound. So people get excited within seven days. Oh, the keto diet's working for me. But what he's saying is you cannibalize your own body proteins on a ketogenic diet. I've said this repeatedly. Let's hear what he has to say about it. And based on a lot of science, 10 researchers reviewing through over 2,500 medical journals every month. Let's hear what uh, Dr. Michael Greger has to say. Told a totally different story. On a ketogenic diet, the rate of body fat loss was cut by more than half. So most of what they were losing was just water, but they were also losing protein. They were also... Okay, so most of it was water loss, but the rate of body fat loss was cut dramatically, which is not good. You're trying to lose body fat to permanently reduce and get rid of body fat. And also the increased rate of protein utilization, meaning burning your own body proteins in instead of burning fat is why keto diets are a dismal failure and you should not be on them for any period of time, let alone for <laughs> past a few days. And if you're going to go keto, do walnuts, nuts and seeds, avocados, all whole fat foods, if you will, because at least the fiber will protect you to an extent. And if you're not, if you're trying to avoid the carbs, okay, the simple carbs, but include the complex carbohydrates. I say that because my good friend, uh, Lee Haney, who I interviewed at the Arnold Classic, fit at any age, talks about eating four, 500 grams of complex carbohydrates in his diet in preparation for bodybuilding competitions, which he won like eight Mr. Olympiads. But I'm gonna tell you something too. Uh, my favorite interview, probably top five interviews, is at iTunes with Dr. Michael Greger and myself. And we got to delve very deeply into these various subjects. And there's a Q&A section as well. So I hope you tune in to uh, find Dr. Nick Delgado at iTunes or just go to nickdelgado.com for the coming webinars and podcasts that we're broadcasting every week. So losing lean mass. This may help explain why the leg muscles of CrossFit trainees placed on a ketogenic diet may shrink as much as 8% within two months. Weight training is supposed to make your muscles bigger, not smaller. So these CrossFit trainers, it's been measured that their leg muscle circumference decreases by 8%. Even though they're working out, they're losing muscle density on these keto diets. Bodybuilders, uh, even... Um, like I mentioned, Lee Haney says, do not go on a keto fad diet. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger says that in the recent The Game Changer. And then one of my video replies with Arnold, he says, ah, I didn't do these fad diets in my day. And now he's gone fully onto a plant-based diet. Now, he's not completely perfect. He doesn't, maybe he needs to learn some of my courses to stay on track and get my cookbook. But let's hear what the rest of this about keto. But look, even if keto diets worked, the goal of weight loss is not to fit into a skinnier casket. Right? 
People whose diets even tend to trend that way appear to live significantly shorter lives. On the other hand, even drifting in the direction of eating more healthy plant foods is associated with living longer. Going the other direction, though starting out more plant-based, but then adding meat to your diet at least once a week may not only double or triple your odds of diabetes, uh, stroke, uh, heart disease, and weight gain. Okay, so he makes a point that the plant-based diet, the people live longer. The keto-type, animal-based diets, they live shorter, higher mortality rate from diabetes, cancer, stroke. And then he's pointing out that let's say you're on a plant-based diet, but you want to fit in meat even once or twice a week increases the, the risk factors, the death rate in, in these individuals. So uh, let's, let's continue on here with, with this next part here. But may be associated with a 3.6 year drop in life expectancy. That's going from no meat to just once a week meat or more. Low carb diets have been shown to impair artery function and worsen heart disease. On the other hand, whole food plant-based diets have been shown to actually reverse heart disease. That's what Ornish and Pritikin use. So Okay, so he states that, states that even eating animal product once a week will uh, decrease your overall benefits. And he talks about Dean Ornish and Nathan Pritikin, and of course I'm following the Delgado type approach diet uh, for 40 years. These things are well proven, especially uh, Danny, if you look under the microscope, I think we have a section here I, I wanted to talk about because he was suggesting that the uh, diet itself affects your circulation in your blood. Here we can see under the microscope, under very high power 6,000 magnification, the separated red blood cells, um, and this is healthy background in blood. And actually this is a drop of my blood taken here uh, just before the show started. And you can see that uh, there's little or no added fat. And when the blood cells touch each other, they'll just separate. Uh, actually, there's uh, blood viscosity studies where you measure triglycerides and people on a high fiber, high complex carbohydrate, no added oil diet, the blood looks the absolute best. I published those studies uh, working with Tony Robbins and 10 days of people being put on my original How to Look Great and Feel Sexy cookbook, which as I said now is uh, the Simply Healthy cookbook. And this is the way to go for all of you. So let's just summarize, uh, go back to the video, uh, Danny. And here we go. All a plant-based diet could do, reverse the number one killer of men and women. Uh, shouldn't that kind of be the default diet to prove another one? And the fact that it can also be so effective in treating, arresting, or reversing other leading killers like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. Only one diet has ever been shown to do all that, a diet centered around whole plant foods. So uh, we don't need to mortgage our health to lose weight. Uh, the healthiest diet also appears to be the best diet for weight loss. After all, permanent weight loss requires permanent dietary changes. I mean, healthier habits just have to become a way of life. And if it's going to be a life long, you want it to lead to a long life. Thankfully, the single best diet proven for weight loss also just so happens to be the safest, cheapest way to eat for the longest, healthiest life. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I'm really proud to have shared with you this information. Be strong, be well. Please subscribe, comment, and we like to reply and follow us on iTunes. Also, go to our coming live webinar podcast at uh, nickdelgado.com.